Carrie did expand the flower beds. She she laid bricks, she put some sand under the bricks first, laid all the bricks all the way up the walkway. And then um, she got some plants from out back and I think she went to Home Depot or Lowe's yesterday, got some more plants. So she's got them laid out where she wants them. And I'm gonna just give you a quick tour of that. Uh, this could change. We're gonna plant in about five minutes, but this is what we have so far on this side. Uh, and when she comes out, we'll give her the mic and as we plant each flower, she's going to tell us what it is, maybe how big it's going to get, what it's going to produce, that kind of thing. It's kind of the focal point of the front yard. Uh, for people that walk, drive by, they kind of, they like this area. I think they like all the areas when they're in the summer, once we've planted everything and uh, it all take it all starts to bloom so uh, yeah that's that's what we got I'm sure we'll move a few things around but, uh, here we go okay I'm gonna dig a hole but I'm gonna use my root slayer for that because uh, it needs to be a bigger hole okay no it's just there it's gonna get tilled into it as we dig and stuff there was a hole there so I was just filling in that hole so we weren't stepping in it. Okay, first things first, I need to move this. It's not the same as this. So, whoa, 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 no, don't just go after. I'll move it. <laughs> no, get it. you have to be careful. You want to get a good root ball. So the leaves come out this far, so you want to come out that far. However big the leaves are, that's... You need for that? Yes, well, uh, yes, if there's one up there. If not, I'll use one of these when we empty it. It can stay for about two minutes or so. It'll be fine. All right. Well, it's a small root ball, so really don't need that big of a container. This came from C. Yep, that's perfect. That's actually the right size. You got the little one in it? Or? No, no, I just need to hold it. Okay. Almost the right size. Almost the right size, but it, it'll be fine. Okay. okay. <clears throat> I think that's a pinstamen. Okay. Smush that back down. Okay, this is where I, I have it placed right now. This shrub will get about this wide woo, and a little taller. What is it? It's a salvia. All it's right. a salvia gray guy, white variety or white color. And so we're gonna plant it there. So first things first, um, you wanna dig a hole the same depth in our clay soil, that's it. Go the depth of what that pot is, but go out wider of a hole. So the roots go out this way, okay? okay. All right. Oh, this there might be a root under here. We might have to relocate it. Root won't you do it? No, I think the tree that we had removed and they ground down the stump, but they only went so far. So we might have to find a new location. You want me to do it? Yeah, but um, yes, that's fine. Just. Make sure that as you do it, make sure you look for sprinklers. You got sprinklers. There are pipes that run throughout our yard, and I never know where they're at. Get it right. Are those your good shoes? Nope. Okay. All... Here, let me move these plants out of your way. I know it. I can figure out where they go just by looking at the other side. Grub. Oh, that's a grub. Mm-hmm. Sure is. Clay. Okay. Yeah, that's the root. Uh, the little roots, I don't mind. I can get through those. Widen. Yeah, widen it. That's what it is. I'm just not heavy enough, and I just go around in a little circle. Once in a while. There are rocks in the ground from whenever the builders must have put their building clay. You can step on those plants. They won't die. Now that root, you're not getting through. But that's okay because I think that, yeah, it is. It sure is. It's plenty far. Because look, when we get it all up to it, we're going to put it up a little high anyway because we're going to mulch too. Grow through that. But the roots can go out wide. Okay. They don't necessarily always... Roots find their own way. Oh, yeah, okay. you're not going to get that root. Oh, this way. Yeah, that's fine. If you need to go back, yeah. you just keep it to the side. The little handheld one. Here. No, I don't think so. Let me put it in here and see. It's right there. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, so the hole's about twice the size around, so it's good. Okay. All right. So now that we have that, let's 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 break up some of this clay real quick. Let's. Why uh, are you gonna break it up in there? Well, because we need some of that clay, that natural clay, mixed in with the rest of the organic. Mud. Yeah, don't go any further. Don't okay. disturb that, because you'll never get it back in there, right? What's wrong with this stuff? Well, uh, with our clay, 
you don't want them to drown. And some of this organic matter drains water too quickly down into the roots and then the roots sit and hit that clay. Well, that thick clay down there holds it like a swimming pool. So then the roots are sitting in standing water and you don't want that, especially on plants that don't like to be in standing water. Like salvia is, is, is not a, this is a drier type plant. So it won't appreciate too moist of feet. And feet means the roots. Yeah, see, the, so we'll just, okay. yeah, it's steam. All right. Okay, I'm only taking out, I'm not planting it yet. I'm just taking it out. You're going to tap the sides a little bit just to loosen it up. You want to support it with your hand. So you get your hand in there to support it. You tip it upside down. Like I said, tap it. I'm not pulling on the plant. There's no pulling going on. I'm just wiggling it. Okay, so you see how the roots are very thick and spiraled around it? You can loosen them up. And if they're too tough and you can't loosen them up, what you can do is... Let me see that one. This spade has the jagged edge and you can take the jagged edge side and you can actually just slice it, just slice them so that they won't keep going around in a circle. And that's fine. And then, and then put it in there and see if it is level. And that's a good height, but I'm going to now put some, some bio starter, biotone starter plant fertilizer. It's stinky. Can't be as bad as the clay. I don't know. Did you get a whiff of it? <laughs> All right. It's my cat litter. Yeah. The other reason why you don't want to disturb that natural clay down there is because if you disturb it and then you put it back and then you put your plant on top of it and then you water, it can actually sink. And then when it sinks, then your plant sinks. Or if your plant doesn't sink, then there's open space down there and then the there's too much air. So that's another reason why you don't want to disturb the natural clay thick clay this hard pan you can't even you know break it up very easily with your fingers although this must have been closer to the top i could actually break this part up which this is what we'll put back around the roots well you don't want to put too much of just this thick garden stuff because it does hold too much water that's why i said we don't want to do this hard pan because it's like molding clay okay. i'm just going to go around it and add some of the soil back that we dug up but i'm not going to go all the way up and then halfway up, I'm going to put some uh, time-release fertilizer around the roots. Not that. Oh, a piece of grass. Where did that come from? Kind of short on that natural clay, aren't Does that break up at all? This stuff smells so good. Okay, hold on one second. A little higher. Oh, there's all the clay. I was like, where did all that soil go that you just dug out? Oh, but this is still that terrible clay. Terrible, terrible. Here's some. Here's some breaks down. They can break up. I guess we're going to have to use some of this because it is from the hole. Okay, I'm not all the way up. You see that? Okay. Now, I like to use this that I get from my local gardening or local nursery. Microlite. Multi-purpose 624. And it's just a... It's like rabbit it's, petals. <laughs> you mean rabbit poop pellets? Pellets. Yeah. I'm just gonna give it a little around it and then I'll top dress too. But I just want some to be a little further down in the soil. It's funny because when you dig up a hole and you go to put it back, I find that with like the clay, it goes back and you're still lacking some because the clay just gets so packed it, it shrinks up. Okay, now see I have it sitting up a little high. That's because I'm gonna come back and put mulch up and I don't wanna bury it in mulch. So I'm just gonna get this clay out here to dry out and then we'll break it with a hammer or something. So that's done. And, uh, you can dig, it's little. It's got a little root ball. You don't have to dig. What's the purple thing you're talking about? Hold on, this little purple What's thing. It called? This is a Brazilian joy weed. It's an annual, it gets 16 inches high. 20 inches wide. It doesn't, yeah, you don't have to go very deep. Oh, you found that, uh, more of that root. That's good. That's good. Mix it all up in that. Here, put some of this in there first. This helps to feed the roots. Is it deep enough? Um, it is. Here, you sure? You can use your kneeling pad and kneel right. I don't need that yet. Okay. Right, I think it is. Like, you're going to put them all, right? Mm -hmm. Cover all this? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can squeeze the bottom, like help force it up. Hmm. Here, here. You need more? Oh. Rabbit pellets. It's a small plant, so just give it a little bit of food. 
This is what you call backfilling the hole with the soil. Is it covered enough? Yep. Yep, because I'm going to come back and do the mulch. Okay. Now you see why I get so dirty. Okay. Where are we going? All right, put that over there for a second. We are going right here, and we are gonna plant these angelonias. I, they're just the blue variety. They look purple, but they're blue. Oh, they're called blue. Where? We're gonna put them in a little triangle. They don't get very big, so we're gonna, doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be a perfect triangle, but so two forward, one back, okay. and that's all you're gonna do. And those are gonna be the same thing. Yep, I actually put some more soil back, like some like some clay, because th these you definitely don't want in the ground too deep. Don't want the wood in there. That's the mulch. That's the old mulch that's breaking down. Grab a pellet. No. Nope. Oh, actually, you know what? Um, we're gonna plant that a little high because I have a lot of yeah. No rabbit pellets? No, I, I will. Give me one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plant this a little higher. All of these are going to be planted just a little high because that has more soil. Height is higher than over here. This is lower. So I don't I don't want to plant them too deep and then come back and because I need to add some more soil here. I'll just throw the stuff on it. Okay. Good. Yeah. Need what? What did we miss? One. I already put that in there. You put both? Mm hmm Okay. Only because, see, this is a four inch. It's not very, it's not very, it's not a very deep root ball. So you don't, definitely don't want to disturb the, so, the clay too much. Okay. All right, let me get the little, let me get the, a little bit of biotonin. You see, hold on one second. He's still a little low. Okay, some more soil. Ugh. No, 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 no. That's, that's Asian? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Are you using both this and that? This, this is, this can go right on the top too. It's, it's just a little bit of food, so. But yes, I did it on that plant already. In fact, I threw it in your hole, in your, your dirt like that, like you just did. All right, so watch the, watch the spacing. You want to make sure that you're about the same. So like, more like right here. Ooh, you see how your thing went down? That's that tunnel. All right, so we're going to have to compact the soil a little. Don't want to go too. Ooh, another one. Oh, he's spinning like a log. He's okay. Uh, that was the tail and nose to tell him. So, all right, we got to go back with the soil. There's the clay. Because we don't... Because the, the container's deceiving because the plant sits a lot lower in it. But look, you don't have to do anything to the roots. Yeah, see how low it's going to sit? So it needs a little bit more. It's real important you don't put them in too shallow, too too deep. Oh, wait. I need to get my biotone in there. Hold on. All right, so those are done, and they're spaced good. Scott had to leave for a little bit to go to an appointment, so I'm going to go ahead and plant the uh, Salvia Grey Guy, the white one, and the little purple bush, and the uh, Touch of Mint, Abelia. I'm going to go ahead and plant them on this side now, and that way when he gets back, we can continue on with the other side of the flower bed. And I've heard very good things about these gray guy variety of salvia, how good they are in the south. And so I've never had one. Well, no, I take that back. I had one but did not know I had one. And I yanked it out because I didn't know how to take care of it. And so, anyway, I'm going to try it again. I added more soil over here and some more compost and uh, cow manure with compost and some other things. And now I'm just, I'm just going to till it all in and then I'm going to dig my hole. I don't know about you, but I really love getting my hands dirty. There's just something very satisfying about it. I have tried working out here and not getting dirty, but I find it quite impossible. And I have a few reasons for going and doing all of this. One, I have a lot of walkers in my neighborhood and they really enjoy looking at the, at the yard, at the flowers. And I like that they really take a lot of enjoyment out of it. And so it just keeps motivating me. And today was the first day that Scott has planted uh, a shrub. So I'm teaching him. He wants to learn. And so I'm going to teach him. It does require a lot of patience because he's not as far al along in the process and the knowledge and all of that as I am. 
but I'm a pretty patient person. I will admit though, it makes me a little on the nervous side, but I'll, I'll, I'll work through all that. I like to make little mounds around the circle of the hole that I dig. That way I can just easily push it all back in. Add a little of this aggregate that I poured over here, just so that when I push it in there, there's a little bit of other organic material instead of just my normal clay. Now, am I as strong as Scott? That is a root. Okay. Oh, got it. Yay. Now, I'm not going down into the hard pan. I'm going to plant this higher. And, of course, I'm filling it, back filling it with some more soil and, of course, mulch. So it will sit a little high for right now, but it'll be fine. Salvia doesn't need a lot of watering once it's established, and I will put my sprinkler system on to make sure that it gets consistent moisture. This plant sits real low in this container, so let me take it out so you can actually see the full height. And if I move my little pile away, you'll see that once I add some more uh, mulch and everything, it'll come up to its good height. I'm going to lower just a little because that was just a little too high. Too much. There. Okay, that's better. Let me go get my... I do have another root here and I, I need to cut it because it's in the way of my... Ugh. Pulled up my monkey grass when I did that and that's why I was going to cut it. But it actually pulled out. So, put all that back around. Okay. Uh oh, hold that thought. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, I need to move it back just a little bit more. Now I'm back filling. It's at the height that I want. This is how much above the soil level that I left it to make room for the mulch so that I can bring the mulch up to it. It's a pretty little plant. All right, now, now that I have got the salvia in the ground, now I'm going to put in this little Brazilian joyweed. I also know it as an Antithera, antitherium, maybe antitherium, or another name brand, I guess, of this variety would be Plum Dandy. Um, but anyway, I've grown this before. It can get, you know, about two feet tall. This says that it only gets 16 inches tall, but mine, they've gotten a lot larger. So I'm putting it next to this. I think it'll be very pretty. So let's get it in the ground. And I think I have it. Move this a little. And I think I have it about this distance. Let's see if I can tease the roots loose. There we go. Okay, watch out, Angelonia. And I did not put that around the salvia, so we Put some of that on the salvia before I mulch up over it. Alright, that one's in the ground. Doesn't have to be exact. Because my sidewalk is curved, it's not straight. So even if I put them completely, perfectly opposite each other, I probably would have to, they wouldn't look right anyway. So I'm not going to worry too much about how perfectly across from each other they are. This side had a lot of those moles, so finding that, you know, I put my spade in there and it just goes straight down. Need some more of this though. It's this too old. Actually, I'm going to add some more soil here, but I don't have any, so I'll have to run to the store and get some more soil. And when I do that, I will probably raise these up again. I hear that person's telephone. I don't want the wood and the mulch getting in my holes. 
I'm not worried about the nitrogen and all that. I'm more worried about it holding on to the moisture in a way that I'm more worried about it holding on to the moisture in a way that causes it to. Come in a little closer. Let's do that again. That's better. It's a better distance. Ooh. Didn't realize there was a bunch of leaves right there hidden under. Oh, 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 come here. Oh, yeah. It's a bad one. Where's my water bottle? All right, in the water bottle we go. The. Asian jumping worms that I mentioned in these videos, they like leaf mold. So that's what they eat most of. They nibble and break down all those leaves that are on the surface of the ground. And then again, the problem is they go potty and poop it all out. And we love worm castings. Yeah, great. Problem is they don't go under the soil where the roots of the plants are with it. They do it right on top of the soil. And if you live in an area that gets a lot of rain, it can wash away. So it doesn't really do much benefit. The other thing is in the forest, they eat all the little underbrush, not mature underbrush, but all the leaves as they fall. Um, and then as the, as the uh, seeds fall and the sprouts happen, and they just end up eating everything. So what happens, deer uh, will start to not be able to find underbrush to nibble on. Uh, and the other thing is roots can't, cannot grab onto the soil that, the way they change the soil, I'm not an expert at this, but the way they change the soil, it makes it into consistency that is like coffee grounds. And so roots can't hold on to it. They can't grab hold. And that is one of the biggest issues. That and of course the, the animals that live in the forest no longer having the underbrush to graze on. It's really a terrible thing. And that's why I talk about it often because I don't think people know about it. Now in the north, they do know about it. Like I said, Michigan, I think possibly Wisconsin and some other areas where they don't even let you plant swap with native soil. You have to send bare root just so that you don't pass on the, the little cocoons that they make. All right, those are in there. And like I said, I'm going to come back and add some more soil and I'll probably raise these up as I add more soil, but they're not going to be rooted for, you know, several, you know, probably a week or two from now. This hard clay that I dug up a couple days ago when I relocated this monkey grass to create this border and the clay finally dried up. It's not easy to break, but the smaller particle you could get, the better. And this clay is very nutrient rich. Uh, probably why it smells so bad, but probably could dig with my hand a shallow enough hole for that plant. But that'll hurt, cause my fingers to hurt later, so. Once in a while when I'm digging in my yard, I find the oddest pieces of concrete. Just once in a while. And I wonder if like when they were building the house and doing the grading the, the land, because our house does sit up higher than the road and the yard does have a very slight slope. Not nearly as, well, I guess it's probably the same as the neighbor across the street, but Anyway, every once in a while I find these pieces and it's like, they're like, well, just throw it in there. We'll cover it up. Don't worry about it. Anyway, so once in a while, I find a stone. Hmm. And most of the time they're just tiny little stones. Once in a while they're pretty big. Like there's another decent sized one. Might actually put these back down in there. There's another one. I don't mind the rocks and the soil. I know roots will just grow around them. Yeah, I think that's probably good and deep enough for this this plant and its shallow roots like that. You'd have to stay. I'm surprised it took Scott such a long time to smell the biotone. He has such a sensitive olfactory nerves. He can smell the strangest things much easier and faster than I do. I'm just going to take a little, little of this off because there's no roots in it. But I do like how it just sits. Makes a nice little sturdy base. And that's a good height right there. 
I bought other abelia. They're very slow grown and maybe it's me. I'm not sure. They don't grow very fast. And they say they're semi evergreen, but mine, and they might be planted in not enough sun. Although this says a part sun is fine, full sun, part sun, and it gets full sun back there, but maybe not enough part sun. It might get a little too much shade, you know, like it gets like lightning sun and then dappled sun throughout the day. So it may not be enough, but they're kind of leggy. But I'm taking a chance with this because I like the variegated foliage and I'm gonna come and go grab the camera and bring it in for a close up because the, the leaves are so pretty and they, they do create like a right pop of color. I am ending up putting this in a straight row. That's not what I wanted to do. How did I get in a straight row? I meant to stagger them a little. Oh well. See that nice pretty variegation? It is a very pretty plant and if it really does end up growing its three and a half height, it's going to make a very great statement out here because I don't have much else that's variegated. I've got some roses that I need to trim down. I've got some salvia back there, right there. I've got some dianthus. I've got autumn sedum or see them autumn joy and then I've got some very I do have some variegation that grass but you can't see it very well because those roses are just taking it over but they are variegated this is all my work stuff but as you see as I go this way there's not a lot of variegation I do have the dusty miller which is adding some nice contrast but nothing else is variegated out here except for that other little mint that we did touch of mint abelia It happened to me. I was filming and sharing such great stories and my mic was not on. <sighs> well, it happens to us all. Okay, so I've gotten the salvia in the ground and I wanted to show you close up the leaves because that's what I was talking about. They're bolder than my other salvias. They're shiny. They still smell very good. Little flower, pretty. They're like a blue purple or steely. I would say a steely purple, bluish color. They almost have like a silvery, pretty, just flower day. And then I want to show you how much root ball I left because I am going to put the two inches of mulch in my yard or on this flower bed. Okay, and then here is the penstemon. Again, it's called Dakota Burgundy. And I love that it moves in the wind, but I told you I was going to give you a close-up. Let me see if I try to focus on how pretty that throat is in there. It's just so Come here, hummingbird. You can see if I get in the top of it, you see how the backs are the lavender color. But then the fronts are more light white. And the little bud Buds are a yellowish, almost like a chartreuse color. Very pretty. And look, doesn't it look pretty with that little hint of abelia progress? Oh, I brought out another plant, an agastache. I think it's called uh, Paquito, Paquito, Paquito Orange. I'll show you the label. That way I don't have to be a master grammar pronunciation type person. They're pretty. As mentioned, it is an agastache. Poquito orange. And isn't that so pretty? Even though it's orange, it's not hot orange. It's got a, like a almost a tangerine soft orange. I just think it's so pretty. I do believe the flowers are good for birds. They are kind of, they might they are tubular, but butterflies might enjoy them more. So I plan to put that right here between the angelonia and its bluish purple color. And I thought it would look nice contrasted to the, and eventually when the purple, I keep forgetting what that's called, but I'm just going to call it uh, plum dan. Because I know that variation, or that name for that plant, I think there's several names for the same. But anyway, when that blooms or gets taller, its blooms are very insignificant, but I think that'll contrast it. And then, of course, I think that this soft tangerine goes very well with this Gara light P 
pink bloom that has a little bit of a red to it which gives it kind of the same feel like it, it's not quite red but it's been you know the tones are softened so they're more towards the cool colors than the hot scores have the salvia gray guy i really like gara it does self-seed but i like how it moves in the wind i like all of these they they all move with the wind and i like that it's coming along okay next plant a delphinium it's 12, it grows 12 to 30 inches tall, about 12 inches wide. It's a zone, well, it's hardy down to zone, well, negative 40 degrees, actually. I'm not sure what zone that is. It doesn't have the zone. Anyway, I normally don't buy delphiniums. I I did it when I first started trying to, to uh, plant flowers and things like that. And I found them to be very finicky for my area, but I am going to try again because... I think I might have had it in the wrong place with not enough airflow, maybe. Um, so I'm going to try one more time. And if it can't grow this time, I won't do them again until I get to a cooler climate area. One day I hope to, when I retire, to move to zone seven, maybe a zone six. I just find that the disease issues are far less. Well, just watching videos, it seems like there's not as many disease issues. Now, let's see. That'd be spacious. Roots look fine. Ooh, I watered it, so it's got some moisture in it. Squeeze some of the excess out. Don't want it to be waterlogged right off the bat. I'm just gently squeezing, really. And I'm just barely going to gently just make sure these roots are somewhat loose. It looks like it wants to go that way. Yeah, pretty. Hey. Oh, oh, don't. A couple of the bottom little stem leaf leaves um, were bent when I bought them. There wasn't many to choose from. Just packing the soil as close to the root ball and as deep as possible. Don't want any little air pockets in there. Keeping in mind that I am on a slope. That, see that little leaf right there? It's already yellowing, and that was because it's already was bent, broken, poor little thing. And again, I'm leaving a little, like an inch, for that mulch. Because they usually don't last the full season. This is an annual, and if it doesn't keep blooming because of our heat, I will probably end up pulling it out and replacing it with something else. But let me get some water on. I really don't want to run into any fire ants. Okay, this cute little plant is a marguerite daisy pink. Or is it pink? Yes, pink. Marguerite daisy pink. R. gyranthemium. I prefer the Marguerite Daisy name, so I will call it that. Just so much easier to say. Announce some of these names. It's just like, who can say them that fast? I mean, my, I guess if you hear them all the time, you can say them a lot faster. Well, for me anyway. But kudos to those who can say them and say them quickly. It's got some yellowing on the bottom, so I don't want people to see that. So let's, let's go this way. Oh, wait. I didn't put Biotone in there. Okay, back to what we were doing. I have to plant it a little deeper. Let's see. That'll be good. About one inch left for the... Okay, check my... Such a happy looking plant. Uh-oh. Okay. It's time to water all this in. And then we can mulch. That's a wrap today. If you want to see the before, before we widen the flower beds and the after, check out our YouTube channel, Garden Mess, and uh, we'll post a we'll post a, an extensive video.